Hello folks, it's day 46 of our Stay Home, Stay Safe devotional series. It's Friday, May 8th, uh, and yesterday we concluded our, our reading and, and look at the book of Ephesians, and so today I'm going to start uh, looking at the words of the Apostle Paul as he wrote to the church in Rome. And we're going to look at uh, the first uh, 17 verses of Romans chapter 1 here tonight. It says, Paul, a servant of Christ Jesus, called to be an apostle, set apart for the gospel of God, which he promised in advance through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures. This gospel is about his son, who in the flesh was born a descendant of David, who in the spirit of holiness was declared to be God's powerful son by his resurrection from the dead, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him we receive grace and the call to be an apostle on behalf of his name, to bring about the obedience of faith among all the Gentiles, including you, who were called by Jesus Christ. To all who's those loved by God who are in Rome, called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. First of all, I thank my God through Jesus Christ concerning all of you, because your faith is being reported all over the world. To be sure, God, whom I serve with my spirit by proclaiming the gospel of his Son, is my witness to how constantly I make mention of you in all my prayers. I always ask if perhaps at last a way might be open, if God wills, for me to come to you. I certainly long to see you, in order that I may deliver some spiritual gift to you, so that you are strengthened. That is, when I am with you, that we will be mutually encouraged by each other's faith, yours, and also mine. I do not want you to be unaware of the fact, brothers, that I have often planned to come to you, but have been prevented from doing so until now. I wanted to have some fruit among you in the same way as I did among the rest of the Gentiles. I have an obligation, both to Greeks and non-Greeks, to the wise and to the foolish. That is why I am eager to proclaim the gospel also to you who are in Rome. For I am not ashamed of the gospel, because it is the power of God for the salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. For in the gospel a righteousness from God is revealed by faith for faith, just as it is written, the righteous will live by faith. You know, as you stop and think for a moment about whom Paul is addressing here in this section of Scripture, you know, between the Greeks and the Romans, they were uh, polytheistic uh, cultures. They had a lot of different gods and goddesses, major gods and minor gods. Um, and, and boy, it was a tough life to be a Roman as far as their religion was concerned because, well, that meant that there were all kinds of gods that they had to try and keep happy. And oftentimes to keep one of those gods happy meant angering one of the other gods, or at least you ran the risk of upsetting those gods. You know, we think of names like Zeus and Apollo and Aphrodite and, and you know, things like th those names like that are part of those gods and goddesses on Mount Olympus that the Romans and the, and the Greeks followed uh, throughout their cultures. And so to have all of those different gods um, who are all idols, but ingrained in the culture of the people to whom Paul is now writing and hoping to visit, you see the miracle of the gospel at work as it is winning hearts for Jesus Christ. It's cutting through all of that idol worship and all of the pressure and insecurity that went along with um, the type of, of religious life that they had in, in Rome to instill a faith that brought peace and confidence, assurance of God's love, and, and the fact that Jesus had died on the cross rose again in order to make it possible for those who believe to be in heaven. And Paul says that he has tried many times and wanted many times, even planned many times, to make a trip to Rome to visit the saints there in Rome. However, God's timing is sometimes different than ours, and even though we might have the, the best intention and reasons for wanting to do something, Paul was prevented for a long time uh, from going to Rome. Eventually he does make it to Rome, 
Uh, maybe not the way that Paul had planned because he ends up being a prisoner uh, who is in jail as he goes to Rome and appeals his case before Caesar. Um, but as Paul uh, wanted to be able to go to Rome, he wanted to talk to these young Christians and to bring them encouragement uh, and, and instruction in God's word because uh, the, the area in which these people were living were, uh, was, was uh, you know, very hostile towards those who believed in Christ because that Christian religion, that way, as it was referred to at that time in Rome, well, it undermined their whole religious life. And so Paul is marveling at the work of the gospel and he talks about the fact that he's not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God for the salvation of everyone who believes. doesn't matter where you started. doesn't matter what you had in your life before. doesn't matter what sins you had committed. The Apostle Paul makes it clear to these folks in Rome that this gospel is for all people so that all might be saved. And... Paul talks about having an obligation first to the Jew and then to the Greek. And what that means is this. The Jews who would have been in Rome would have had the Old Testament covenant. They would have known the promises that God had made about the Savior. And so they would have been looking for the fulfillment of that Savior. So Paul would always start with the Jews in whatever area he was working as he went to work and start a new church, he would meet with the members of the Jewish synagogue. He would proclaim Christ crucified. And, and then he would go from there to working with the Gentiles, the non-Jews, who um, also needed to hear the Savior. And Paul would preach that news to both Jew and to Greek uh, because, well, the Holy Spirit works in hearts when the word is preached. And he works that saving faith the same type of faith that he has worked in our hearts. Now, in our modern day, our faith is challenged quite a bit too because there's a lot of different philosophies, a lot of different religions, and a lot of different um, personal beliefs that people have, many of which are in conflict with Scripture, many of which uh, are hostile towards Scripture. Now, we may not be persecuted like the Christians were at the time uh, of the Apostle Paul uh, when, when Nero actually burned the city of Rome and blamed it on the Christians and an all-out persecution began against the members of the Christian church because they were different. That may not be happening where we are today, but in some circles it is happening yet today. And so we cling to the truth of the gospel because we know that it has the power to save. And if it is God's will that we die uh, promoting his word and holding to that word, we know that when we leave this world, that, that's not a disaster. In fact, it's a blessing because then we will walk through the gates of heaven and be with our Savior forever because of the power of the gospel, which has, has brought us to faith and made us God's children and part of his family. And then we are called simply, the Apostle Paul says in the, in the closing verse here, because of that gospel, we have been called to be righteous in God's sight. Righteous means that when God looks at us, he doesn't see our sin because of what Christ has done. His innocent blood has removed it. And now he says those who are righteous, those who are believers, those who are children of God, no matter what their ethnicity is, those who are righteous by faith, those who are righteous will live by faith. In other words, the, the truth of God's word will be the guiding light and principle for their day-to-day -day lives. And it will give them the resolve to, to share their faith with others so that the Holy Spirit might work through them to touch the hearts and lives of those who right now are living in darkness so that one day they might believe the truth and be saved. May that be the case of all the people that you and I know in our lives, that we have the opportunity given to us by God to witness to them, to testify to the truth of God's word. And when we seize that opportunity, we pray that the Holy Spirit works through it to touch those hearts and to change those lives so that they come to faith, a faith that means that they will be with us forever in heaven. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, as the Apostle Paul was not ashamed of the gospel, but recognized it as 
the power of God working in hearts and lives. So, O oh Lord, make it so that we are never ashamed of your gospel message, never ashamed of anything that your word has to say, but instead we are bold to share it with others, to point out the truth, so that that truth might speak to their hearts as the Holy Spirit works, God willing to create faith in those hearts and to, and to call them out of the darkness of unbelief so that they might see the error of their ways and come to know Christ and to live by faith and therefore live as righteous children of God who have been redeemed by the Savior and washed clean in his blood. O oh Lord, be with us as we endeavor to reach out and touch the lives of those who are in our lives with that gospel message so that one day they may gather around the throne of God with us in heaven as well. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.